So these brand new 121 cube VVT M8 engines from Harley Davidson, uh, they're out now, they've been out for a little while, but you guys are in for a bit of a treat. I'm actually taking you guys along with me down to Sydney to check out Harley Davidson Australia's Technical Training Centre where I did all my master's certification. And uh, while we're there guys, we're gonna be taking a look at the inside of these engines, seeing exactly what they're all about, checking out the components, miking a few things up, and seeing what they're all about. So let's get straight into it. Right, guys, I'm standing here at the, uh, at the entrance to the technical training centre here at Harley Davidson Australia. This is where I did all my uh, training towards my master's certification over the years. So uh, let's go inside and check it out. I'm actually down here just to do some uh, updated training on the Revolution Max engine. So that's the engine in the uh, Pan America and Sports Dress lineup. So you're just here doing a bit of training on that, just getting familiar with that engine and all the goings on of that. But uh, while I'm here, guys, we are checking out this new 121 cube VVT M8 engine. So uh, let's go straight inside and check it out. All right, guys, so we've got it, um, as you can see here, we've got this thing pulled down a little bit just to take a look at some of the components. They are laid out just there. But um, while we're here, we're just going to take a look at, obviously, we've got the new piston design here. So obviously the uh, valve reliefs or valve pockets, whatever you're comfortable calling them. A little bit different there and you can see the raised the raised dome on top of the piston there hopefully the lighting's good so a little bit different design piston obviously the stroke is now longer on this guy so it's a four and five eight stroke as you can see here we'll take a look at the head over on the bench in a minute but you can see the intake port here is definitely a lot different one of the things i have noticed about it too is that the short turn radius on the inside of the the port here is a lot nicer uh, than the current normal M8 head. Cam plate and everything appears to be the same, as far as I know it is the same. Uh, the, there, the, obviously the camshaft's different. The camshaft is in here on this one, but it, we have it out here. So we'll take a look at that in a minute and the cam phaser there as well, just bolts on. Same drive sprocket on the bottom here. Cam chain is the same, tension is the same. So other than the VVT cam phaser and the camshaft design, it is actually very, very similar in there. Moving on to the head, folks. So what you're gonna notice straight away is that the breather system is now gone from the cylinder head. Uh, it is now vented through the transmission cover uh, and it has an oil separator in there as well. Obviously these bolts here where the normal breather system used to come back out and get recirculated into the intake manifold is now just a pure um, slot there just to mount the air filter backing plate too, I would I would assume, because there's literally no, no passage there anymore. Some of the uh, cylinders been machined off here to, because the throttle body and intake manifold is now shorter, it's mounted in and on an angle. So some of the fins have been um, redesigned here on the cylinder, which we'll see over on the table in a minute, but that's just a bit of a look there at the, um, at the engine. The valve springs are slightly different. I don't have the specs on them, but I'm pretty sure that they are very similar to what the uh, Screaming Eagle high lift ones uh, would be out of the catalog. So I'm assuming that that's what they are. They just painted uh, white there just as an identifying uh, identifying mark for the uh, assembly line, I would imagine. So let's take a look at the rest of the uh, components. So starting out with the cylinder head here, guys, the combustion chamber is uh, a lot different design. So we can see uh, the shape here is definitely different. You can see it's uh, actually very beneficial to the intake valves here. There's less shrouding around these now. Uh, the little more squish area there, uh, but uh, much, much the same design with the two outboard plugs and the uh, ACR valve in the center there. But nice, nice looking design. Uh, this is an 86cc combustion chamber. I have measured that up. So 86ccs there. Uh, yeah, a little less. A little less shrouding around the intake valves is pretty good. And obviously, as you saw on the engine there, the intake port being a, a different design. Uh, the cooling system too, obviously it is water cooled on the head. Now that is all different as well. And it does prioritize the rear head first. So when the, um, the coolant flows into the rear cylinder head first, through and uh, 
out into the front cylinder head. So through this little crossover hot, uh, hose here. So there's no more uh, oil line that runs across the top anymore. So that's a, that's a good feature. That's gonna save a bit of time, no doubt. One of the uh, changes to the counterbalancer system here is it's just been lightened up uh, significantly. The same amount of uh, balance is provided to the engine. It is just uh, lightened up here. Now, this is a running change, so this will come in all M8 models, uh, I'm assuming from now onwards. So uh, they've just lightened it up there just to help some parasitic parasitic loss, so just to help some, uh, just reduce the, the rotating mass, but uh, same amount of balance to the engine. Right into the cam stuff, guys. So the camshaft is different. I have the uh, specs on that. I will, well, when I say I the specs on it, we did muck around here and uh, do some degreeing on the uh, on the engine here with the camshaft installed. So uh, we did uh, work out that we have about 519th hour of lift. So uh, I, that's, look, that's unofficial, guys. That's just what we've measured here. So 519 lift. But, um, Obviously, the duration is variable with the, the cam phaser here. So that's just a bit of a look at that. The center bolt here, which uh, holds the, this holds it all together. So through here, into the end of the camshaft, and the oil flow obviously creates the, um, creates the timing difference there through the center bolt here, and into the phaser. So not much to see here, other this just looks like a normal camshaft, except for the end here where the center bolt holds it all together. Uh, as I said, I will post the uh, timing specs that I measured here down in the description. They are not as accurate as we could have been. We, we have the, still have the, the degree wheel on the, um, on the engine here. We're mucking around. Just uh, having a bit of a look briefly. So they're not official results. So don't take my word for it. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see, interesting to see what Harley Davidson or uh, Screaming Eagle publish in the future. Just a bit of a look at the cylinder there, guys. So uh, this one being the rear, you can see this is now machined away uh, to allow the intake manifold and throttle body to mount inboard further, closer, and a bit on a bit of an, a bit of an angle as well. I'm not sure if the um, cylinder height is any different. I do know that when the cylinder is mounted onto the engine, the piston does actually sit 20 thou proud of the deck. So. Uh, and the, uh, the advertised compression ratio that I've seen on, uh, on this is 11.4 to one. So cylinder head gasket is a lot thicker, folks. I don't know if you can see, uh, many techs will probably know exactly what's going on here, but this is very, very thick, much different. And it is uh, an, obviously an MLS style gasket. Right, finally, the uh, last change I, I'm aware of uh, in the transmission is just the shift drum. So if any Harley techs are out there looking or anyone has pulled one apart, you'll see exactly uh, the difference here with the shift drum. So not much else has changed there, guys. Everything else, gear ratios, everything else is still the same. So yeah, a bit of a look at the rest of it there, guys. So that's um, pretty much all I've come up with so far. It will be interesting, interesting to see um, you know the flow numbers on these cylinder heads and uh, just how much power these things will make once we can uh, tune these things properly so pretty cool hopefully um hopefully you guys enjoyed it there's a bit of an inside look here at some of the parts well thanks for checking out this video folks i hope you enjoyed uh, that little inside look into what's going on inside these new vvt engines i for one am very excited about what the future holds for them the uh, potential to make a lot more horsepower is there now uh, with these new uh, new designs and the new VVT incorporated into it there. So I'm really excited. Obviously tuning is not available as yet, but once that uh, develops over the coming, coming months, uh, it's gonna be very exciting to see where these things go. So yeah, thanks for checking out this video, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't, drop any questions down in the comments, and uh, I'll see you guys in another one.